Let's say I wanted to split this up into partial fractions. Now, it would make sense uh, from what we've seen before that we would go about this by writing it as a over x plus 4. Now, we've got two brackets of x plus 4, so we'd have to have another b over x plus 4 uh, plus c over x minus 2. OK, we've just seen an example of uh, that in the previous video. However, there is a problem here. And the problem is with having this and this. Because if you've got a over x plus 4 plus b over x plus 4, then the denominators are the same. So you could just write that as some other number over x plus 4. And so what we would be saying then is that I could combine those two fractions to make that. But clearly, when I do so, I'm going to get x plus 4 times x minus 2 in the denominator, not x plus 4 squared times x minus 2. So clearly, something has gone wrong. And clearly, that means that this assumption that we could write it like that was wrong. So how do we get around this problem? Well, the way to do it, and the way to get around it, is that if you've got a squared like that on the denominator, so you've got a bracket squared, then you don't just need this a over x plus 4, but you also need b over x plus 4 squared. That's the only way that you're going to get this x plus 4 squared to work. And you can't just have those two either. I mean, you can try it out, uh, but it's not going to work. It's not going to simplify correctly. You need this to do it. So from there, it's business as usual, really. Um, we can go straight in and go to 1 is equivalent to a. Now, when we're multiplying both sides by this x plus 4 squared x minus 2, this fraction has an x plus 4, but it doesn't have two of them. So it needs another, and it needs the x minus 2. Now the b, that's, just, that's got the x plus 4 squared, so it just needs x minus 2. And the c needs x, minus, uh, x plus 4 rather, squared. Now... When we're at this stage, we can let x be equal to minus 4 to start off with. That's going to eliminate that bracket and that one. So I'm going to have 1 is the same as minus 4 take away 2, so minus 6, sorry, not a, b. So b is minus 1 sixth, OK? So then I could choose let x be equal to 2. And so I'd have 1 is equal to where it's going to get rid of that bracket and that one. And I'm going to be left with 2 plus 4 is 6. So 6 squared is 36. So 36C. So C must be 1 over 36. But then, then what's happened is that I've ran out of numbers that I can substitute in to eliminate brackets. So once you're at that stage... What you need to remember is that we have this equivalency symbol. And what that means is that you can, that the left-hand side is always equal to the right-hand side, regardless of the value of x. So you can substitute in whichever x you like. It has allowed us to substitute in minus 4 and 2 and not change the value of a, b, and c here. So we can substitute in whatever we like. So when we've ran out of options to eliminate brackets, start substituting, start substituting numbers in, which are just easy to work with. So I would substitute in 0, for example. That makes sense. So if I sub in x is 0, because it's easy to work with, I'm going to get 1. I'm going to get uh, 0 plus 4 times 0 minus 2, so minus 8a. I've got minus 2b. And I've got 16c. Now I know what c is, and I know what b is. So I've got 1 is equal to minus 8a. I don't know what a is, but I know that b is a sixth, or minus a sixth. So minus 2 times minus a sixth is 1 third. And then I've got uh, 16 lots of 1 over 36. 
So 16 over 36 simplifies to 4 ninths. So I can subtract 1 third and 4 ninths from both sides. And that gets me 2 ninths. So minus 8a is 2 ninths. And so a, dividing that by minus 8, is minus 1 over 36. And so we can write 1 over x plus 4 squared x minus 2 as minus 1 over 36, so minus 1 over 36 x plus 4 plus b, uh, which is minus a 6, so minus 1 over 6 lots of x plus 4 squared plus c, so 1 over 36, so 1 over 36 x minus 2. And that are the, these are the partial fractions of this original problem.